Um, let me thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to be here today and to share with you our experience of one year with a, a digital pet uh, city system. Uh, I believe that in the near future, all, all our scanners will be digital. So when you try to buy your next one, you will be offered a digital system. Uh, this is a, a no return way. Uh, the solid state detectors will replace the, the photomultipliers, which is a, a technology of the, of the uh, 50s. This is uh, our, our system, it's a Philips system, it's called the Virius. Uh, for those of you who are interested in the technical details, uh, just uh, you pull this article where we published the, the, our testing according to the NEMA standards of the system. It is published uh, recently this year in the, uh, in the uh, JNM. Today I will focus more on the clinical uh, results so you have an idea of what we can expect from these systems uh, on clinical grounds. Uh, our system is installed next to uh, an analog system, a state-of-the-art analog system with 64 as ICT. Um, so we have uh, mainly focused during the first year on the comparison uh, between the two systems, between the two scanners. So the patients who have accepted to be uh, studied with the two systems on the same day with a single injection, those patients have been inject injected with FDG and then uh, studied on the same sessions same session with the two scanners. And we have randomized as to whether which one was uh, has been done first, either the, the uh, analog uh, Gemini or the digital uh, videos. Uh, the first uh, question we faced was if the images were going to be better. Here you can appreciate the difference. Uh, this is one of our first uh, 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 patients uh, studied with, with both systems, a patient with a lymphoma. Uh, you will notice, oops, you will, uh, excuse me. Uh, you will notice that on, on the digital scan, uh, on your right, the image looks more crisp with the higher contrast. The anatomy is better seen uh, on the on the digital scan as compared to the to the uh, analog. <laughs> uh, the quality of the, that you can reach can be appreciated in this example of a patient with lymphoma studied only with a digital system. On your right side, uh, you have the, uh, the uh, uh, scan uh, pre-chemotherapy and post-chemotherapy uh, on your, on your uh, right. So the images look, look better with higher contrast and better definition of, of, the, of the scans. Then the next issue was uh, whether the uh, lesions were going to be seen uh, with higher intensity of up uptake. And that's the case. This is just an example for you uh, to see. Uh, this is a, a patient with, with breast cancer and, and a, an axillary lymph node. So you will see that on the digital scan on your right, the, the lymph node is seen with a higher contrast as compared to the uh, scan done on the same day, same session uh, in, this, in this particular patient. The next issue is uh, to which extent are we going to encounter more lesions, to detect more lesions? Uh, and we have seen that um, approximately in 20% of the patients, we are going to detect more lesions. This is an example of a patient with, with a, a bulky mass uh, in, in, in the neck, uh, this is the primary, and you will see that more lesions are seen, especially those that are small, the tiny lesions are better delineated, are better seen on the digital scan as compared to the, to the uh, analog scan. 
Um, this is another example of a patient with a colorectal cancer with lung, with lung and liver metastasis. You will see that in this particular patient, the uh, small lesions, uh, these lung metastasis are better seen, sometimes, sometimes are not seen on the, on the uh, analog scan performed on the same, uh, on the same session. Uh, then uh, we thought, is this going to work with other with other tracers? This is an example of a, of a colina scan uh, in a patient with prostate cancer. Uh, this is the, uh, the those are the, the digital images and those are the analog images. You will notice that this patient has a small metastasis uh, in this uh, cervical uh, vertebra, which would have been missed on the on the on the uh, analog scan. So it also happens in patients with other traces that lesions are um, better seen, better delineated on the digital scanner as compared to the analog scanner. Uh, what about um, entities beyond oncology? Uh, this is an example of a patient with uh, with a parathyroid uh, adenoma who was uh, studied uh, with uh, SESTA maybe, and then was uh, studied uh, with the uh, with the um, with the analog scanner and with the digital scanner. Well, the patient has a small parathyroid adenoma that was removed surgically, and it was confirmed that surgery that, that corresponded to a parathyroid adenoma. Uh, it was barely seen with the, with the uh, analog scanner. It was barely seen on the on the uh, on the SESTA maybe a scan. So in this particular situation, in patients with parathyroid adenomas, especially, especially the small ones, uh, we have seen that this, uh, the digital PET CT performs uh, very well. Um, as I said, the images are going to be seen with higher contrast, and in fact, the SUBs are in general higher with, with uh, the digital system. Uh, this is an example uh, of a patient who was studied because of a, of a leiomyosarcoma. The patient has has pulmonary nodules, uh, and if we go to the, uh, the, the lesion with, with the highest uptake, the SUV is almost double with the digital system. Here the message is that if we are going to do follow-up studies when the baseline scan has been done with an analog system, uh, one should stick to the analog system for the follow-up, otherwise uh, the SUV uh, might be, might be uh, misleading. Um, another issue is the heterogeneity of the lesions. Uh, this is an example of a patient with, with a sarcoma lung metastasis. You will notice if we look at the, at the, at the primary that with the digital uh, uh, images, the heterogeneity of the lesion is better demonstrated with the uh, digital system as compared to the analog. So for this particular problem, when we are going to assess heterogeneity, the digital system also has significant uh, advantages. Uh, let me show you a few examples of lesions that are seen on the digital uh, uh, scan and, uh, and were missed by the, by the analog scan. Uh, again, here you have the uh, a patient studied with the digital system on top with the analog bil uh, below. Uh, all those uh, studies w were done after injection of seven millicuries adjusted to body weight, but average seven millicuries of FDG for the sake of the comparison. Um, you will notice that the patient has is a patient with a lung cancer. Obviously, the patient has uh, liver metastasis, but you will see that there is a small lesion here that is seen on the on the digital scan, and it is not appreciated on the analog images. Uh, same patient. Um, the patient also had. Uh, a small nodule here, which is seen on the digital scan, uh, and is not seen on the on the analog scan. Uh, same patient had um, a, a small uh, bone metastasis. Uh, you will notice that it is seen with uh, much higher contrast in a more convincing way on the uh, digital scan as compared to the analog scan. Um, 
An area in which this, this type of systems perform very well is in the area of the liver because of the uh, um, uh, contrast resolution recovery. Uh, let me show you a, a couple of examples to you. Uh, uh, this is a patient with uh, breast cancer and suspected liver metastasis. Uh, uh, you will see at different levels, this is the analog scan, that's the digital scan, the analog scan, and the digital scan. Well, there are lesions that are seen on the, on the digital scan that are not seen in the analog scan. Not much relevant in this particular patient, but notice this one. This is a, a patient with breast cancer as well, and non-suspected liver metastasis. You will see that on the analog scan there is nothing, but there is a small liver metastasis that is clearly appreciated on the digital scan. So in, in the area of the liver, we can uh, often change the stage uh, of, of the patients. Uh, another example here, uh, breast cancer and suspected liver metastasis. Again, this is the digital, the analog, the digital, and the analog. You will notice that there are clearly lesions that are seen either much better or simply missed by the uh, analog uh, scan as compared to the digital one. So in the liver, it, the, this type of digital systems uh, offer a clear advantage. Uh, now about the size of the lesions we can detect. Uh, this is an example of a 60 years old male with, uh, that came for a staging of lung cancer. Uh, the, the primary tumor and the, the, the lung metastasis are better seen on the digital as compared to the analog. But there is this uh, small nodule here of four millimeters that it is seen, barely seen on the, on the uh, digital, in, is, was missed. Uh, on the on the analog scan, we believe that in the case of the lung nodules, we can lower down our threshold threshold of detectability down to approximately three to four three to four uh, millimeters. Uh, this is an, another example: a patient who came uh, for a restaging of uh, melanoma. Uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, digital scan. This is the analog. This uh, half centimeter nodule is seen on better seen on the virus than on the on the Gemini. There is a small lesion here in the mediastinum, which is. Uh, seen on the digital mist uh, in the analog. This same patient uh, had come uh, a month before. Notice this is the, the study, the digital scan of May 2018. This patient had come on March 2018. So this is a small uh, four millimeter nodule, uh, which is seen here, measured two millimeters here. And I mean, it it is seen on the CT, and it, we thought, well, it might be benign. No, no, it was malignant. But because, I mean, the evolution has demonstrated that it was malignant. Uh, so our threshold for detectability um, might be around three to four millimeters, we feel. Uh, so here we can change paradigm because um, up to now we uh, small nodules we tend to report when they are negative in FTG scans we tend to report uh, we cannot characterize the nodule metabolically may maybe because of the of the small size and here we can change paradigm we can bring down uh, this threshold from one centimeter to a slightly below half centimeter. So uh, and again, about the uh, the proportion of patients in whom we detect more lesions. I mean, the full article has been published uh, recently in the, in each in MMI. You can retrieve the article if you wish, but that's the main table. Uh, this is the digital system, and this is the analog system. All patients are studied the same day with a single injection. Uh, you will notice that uh, there are patients in whom the, 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 uh, 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 the digital uh, system detects the lesions and uh, they are totally missed on the analog and there is a proportion of patients with more lesions. So in total, this is our first 100 patients. So it's 22% it's of all patients if we take into account also patients without lesions. If we consider only patients with lesions, then it's 26% of the patients, which is a significant number. Uh, 
Uh, that does not mean that we change the stage in all of them. Obviously, a patient who has 10 lesions having 12 will not change the stage. Uh, now, we need to understand in which particular situations, such as in the case of the liver in breast cancer, for example, we can really have an impact on, uh, on uh, the clinical staging. Uh, this is for you to, to see also what is the difference in the case uh, of, uh, of uh, bonus scans with fluorine. Again, we see more lesions and the images uh, look better when we, when we use fluorine uh, for bonus scanning. Uh, in the case of the brain, the images with the digital uh, videos are spectacular. We, we use the, uh, the, uh, a one millimeter reconstruction, a standard for the brain. Uh, and this is the appearance of the, of the uh, FDG uh, brain scans. Uh, and we use the same uh, one millimeter reconstruction uh, settings for uh, amyloid or in the case of tau. Now here we are doing clinical research only, but we use this uh, standard this is a standard uh, one uh, millimeter reconstruction that is feasible with the digital uh, scan. So in summary, uh, this type of digital photon counting offered uh, by the videos uh, uh, brings uh, improved uh, image quality, no doubt. The SUVs are in general higher, which has implications for follow-up studies. Uh, more lesions uh, are detected, in particular those that are sub-centimeter uh, in diameter. And finally, uh, uh, we can reduce either the time or the tracer dose because the systems are much faster. So in our experience, uh, I mean, the, the studies I have shown to you were done with a single injection of seven millicuries. But you can reduce the dose by half or the time by half without any loss in image quality. So you can either inject three millicuries and do two, two uh, minutes per bed. The, uh, scan, the uh, exams I have shown to you were, do were done at two minutes per bed. So you can lower your dose at half, so three millicuries and two minutes per bed, or you can uh, stick to the seven millicuries dose and go to one minute per bed without any loss of quality. I mean, below those values, it is feasible. It is feasible. And images can uh, still be uh, diagnostic. That's true. But you will lost quality. So if you want to keep the, the quality offered by the digital scan, you can reduce either the dose or the time uh, by half. And with this, I will finish. And if you have any question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yes, to uh, auditory questions. Are there questions? in the audience. Uh, did you perform direct comparison of SUV between two uh, digital and yeah, yes. analog? Yes, we have done this. It is published in the European Journal of Nuclear Medicine as well this year. Uh, the title is Comparison of SUVs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I mean, in, in the same patients, the uh, SUVs are higher, but this, there is one factor here. Uh, and, and the factor is which a scan has been done first. So if the uh, analog scan is done first and the digital is done afterwards, the difference is much higher because you have the higher sensitivity of the digital system plus the, the, the delayed effect of delayed uptake. So if we go the other way around, so if the digital is done first and the analog is done afterwards, then the delayed effect compensates a little bit for the different sensitivity. And the difference is not that higher. And uh, for the level of uh, uptake, um, which one, which SUV, uh, SUV might be more true for tumors? Well, I believe that here the only implication is the, the, the follow-up studies in patients with lymphoma, when you are assessing response to chemotherapy. If your baseline, baseline study is done with an analog, you have to stick to the analog. See? If you, you start from the very beginning with the digital, then you have to do the, the follow-up in the same scanners. Yeah. Um, I mean, other implications to me are not that clinically important because the SUVs are higher, okay, but I mean, 
more important is uh, that we can detect the smaller lesions that are not seen on the on the analog. Yes, yes. Well done. Thank you for a nice presentation, Professor Carrier. Um, first question is: uh, Does your uh, Gemini scanner has time of flight? Uh, yes, yes. Then it makes sense because, as, as far as I see, there is also difference in uh, reconstructions. Of course, of uh, course. and actually. Uh, Various reconstruction uh, looks a little bit more grainy, although yeah, it looks uh, like more precise. Uh, another question: uh, It's almost the same as previous, uh, but from another point of view. Uh, when you have a primary uh, patient, how do you solve this ethical problem? <laughs> Which scanner to use? Because you cannot do all these yes. studies and uh, various. Yes. But that, I mean, happens to us in nuclear medicine every time we buy a new system, because it happens the same with the spec. You have a new spec which is much better than the previous one. How do you select the patients? Um, I mean, uh, what we do now, we uh, schedule the two scanners apart, so we have no any specific criteria. Uh, only the patients who already have a baseline study then are kept there. Uh, for the fluorine, we have no preference. Despite the, the images are better, we, I mean, we, we don't know if this higher sensitivity will have any clinical impact in the case of bone, bone lesions. So for the fluorine, we still keep the, our, our schedules in independent from, we, we schedule the patient when, when there is a, a free slot, regardless of the, of the scanner. Myself, if I, if I would have to uh, be a scan or one of my relatives, <laughs> I would prefer to do so on the digital scanner, if this is an answer. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Uh, so what was, uh, in practice, the time difference between between the imaging? Uh, average is uh, average, ab yeah. about 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Okay. Yeah, this oh, is the oh, oh, oh. average. Because yeah. Then, then yeah. yeah. So, so then, then the, the, the SUV thing, that it means that when we see more smaller lesions and when we, we, we will, we, in practice, it, it might be that, that in, in, in the future, like cut off, you know, it depends on the disease, of course, and tracer. But, if, let's say that this, if it's like 2.5 uh, for some, so it, it will will be like let's say 1.8 8 or something something like that, and so so that means that the timing will be more important. Agree. When, 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 when you standardize the pr protocols yeah. and, and using clinical practice in in, in the, the follow-up. Yes, agree. Totally agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>